This is the new McLaren 765LT, and it is the latest McLaren supercar. It's essentially a high-performance version of the McLaren 720S, and it is an ultra-limited production car with an amazing 754 horsepower. And today, I'm going to take you on a tour of it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my new online enthusiast car auction website with cool cars from the modern era being auctioned every single day. If you're looking to sell a cool car from the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to sell it. You'll get the best community and the most money for your car. And if you're looking to buy a cool car from that era, Cars and Bids has some very interesting vehicles, as you can see here. Check out Cars and Bids at carsandbids.com. I've borrowed this 765 LT from O'Gara San Diego, which is also McLaren San Diego, my local McLaren dealership here in the San Diego area. Now, McLaren San Diego is a relatively new dealership, but they have all of the latest McLaren models, including soon the new 765 LT, which is scheduled to go on sale in the next couple of months. So let's talk McLaren 765 LT. You probably already know about the McLaren 720S, which is a fantastic supercar that I truly love. But now it's been turned up a notch. Like I said, this is the high performance version of the 720S. 720S has about 710 horsepower. This has 754. The result is 0 to 60 in about 2.7 seconds. And it's not going to be easy to find. According to McLaren, they're only going to make 765 examples of the 765 LT for the entire world. An appropriate figure. And pricing will start from around $360,000, which is before options, which are plentiful, and which is a hefty premium over the regular 720S, which starts around $300,000. Maybe most impressive is the weight loss. Equip one of these right, and you can get it under 3,000 pounds, which is amazing. That would be a weight loss of around 300 pounds compared to the 720S. And today, I'm going to show you all around it. Unfortunately, I can't yet drive the 765 LT. That'll be coming in a few months. But I can take you on a thorough tour of the 765 LT and show you all the quirks and features of McLaren's latest supercar, one of the rarest, most impressive modern McLaren models. So, let's get started. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the 765 LT by discussing it's LT. That stands for Long Tail, which is a name McLaren has used for its highest performance models for a long time. The only problem here is this doesn't actually have a long tail. The 765 LT is only a third of an inch longer than a regular 720S. Not exactly a long tail, maybe a slightly longer tail, but either way, they're using the name to tie it into the 675 LT and other long tail performance McLarens. But of course, as you can imagine, there are quite a few more changes beyond the slightly longer tail that help distinguish the 765 LT from the 720S. There are quite a few modifications to the engine, for one, that help to bring it from 710 horsepower to 754 a lot of stuff under the skin mechanical changes. You also have a new, larger, more aggressive exhaust that comes out in the back, in the middle of the rear with these four exhaust outlets. Absolutely unmistakable that this car is something special with these back here. And of course, it sounds pretty good. Take a listen to the 765 LT. That 
is pretty impressive. Equally impressive is this car's acceleration. Like I said, zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds, which is officially one tenth of a second quicker than the regular 720S. And there are some more changes beyond just extra power that help make that possible, specifically a lot less weight. Now on average, a 765 LT will weigh about 180 pounds less than a corresponding 720S. But if you equip this vehicle properly, you can get it down even more than that, under 3,000 pounds, which is an amazing figure for a modern car with modern electronics and safety components that's this size. It really is unbelievable. The problem is that getting it below 3,000 pounds requires deleting the air conditioning and deleting the stereo. Two options that McLaren offers, but it's unlikely that anybody's actually going to do. Still, it is possible. And there's far more weight savings than just that. This car is equipped with these impressive ultralight seats. Look at these things, more on them later, they save 40 pounds. It's also equipped with ultralight wheels. They save 50 pounds over the 720S, and you can see they say 765 LT on them. It has a distinctive design, but it also specifically says so you know what you're looking at. McLaren says they've also saved a little over five pounds by removing the carpeting, just in case you didn't think they were going after every little bit. Well, clearly they are. And it goes beyond just that, because this car isn't only about extra power and lower weight. McLaren has tried to improve it in every way possible over the 720S. That means better suspension. This car has a slightly more aggressive, sportier suspension and a little bit lower ride height to make it handle as well as possible. It also has improved tires over the 720S. You have these Pirelli P0 Trofeo R tires designed to absolutely maximize grip on a racetrack. And probably most importantly, there are aerodynamic upgrades to the car designed to increase downforce and glue it to the road as much as possible. And you you can look all around and see them. You have the front splitter, this giant carbon fiber piece, which looks like something you wouldn't want to scrape or scratch going up a steep driveway. I suspect that could get very expensive. On the side of the car, you have these carbon fiber rocker panels going down the entire side, again, to improve aerodynamics, also makes the car look a lot cooler. And in back, you have this carbon fiber rear diffuser and these little carbon fiber panels on the side, all intended to improve aerodynamics aerodynamics, make it more aggressive and improve downforce. Now, the drawback of all this stuff is it's designed for high performance track use, making the car as fast as possible when going around corners, but it limits the car's top speed. The regular McLaren 720S will do about 211 miles an hour. This will only do 207 because all of the aero upgrades make it less slippery than the standard car. But I suspect most customers won't mind since it's more likely you'll be on the racetrack trying to go as fast as possible than trying to hit a top speed of over 200 miles an hour. And next up, I wanna get inside the 765 LT, but before I do, I wanna talk about this exterior color because it's amazing. Now, this gray color McLaren calls chicane gray, and in this light, you can see it's a pretty standard gray, looks good, but nothing really special about it until you go outside. Outside, you can see it actually has like flakes of reddish gold. When the sun hits it, it lights up and it looks really stunning. That is called chicane effect, and it is quite a bit more entrancing than regular chicane gray. To the casual observer who sees the car on a cloudy day, they would never know, but get it into the sun, and it is one of the very coolest paint colors I have ever seen. But anyway, next we move into the 765 LT. First, I wanna start with the key, which looks like this, pretty cool. And to unlock the doors, you press the McLaren logo in the middle, not some stupid unlock button, press the McLaren logo to begin your McLaren experience. I also like the fact that the button on the bottom, the trunk button, has little dots to let you know it's the trunk button in case you're fumbling around in the dark with your key fob. The cool thing is the dots line up with the wheels on the picture on the button itself, which is a nice little quirk most people probably won't notice. But anyway, back to getting in. 
in. You press the McLaren button, it doesn't just unlock the doors, it actually pops the door open just a little bit. Not all the way, but enough that you don't have to unlatch it and you can just open it from there. That's a good thing because when you first walk up to this car, you'll notice there's no door handle. No immediately obvious door handle anywhere. <laughs> to find it, you have to go inside this intake and you can see there it is hidden from view. You just pull on it with the doors unlocked and then the door will open. And of course it opens cool upwards like a supercar door should to attract even more attention as if that exhaust note didn't already do it. But anyway, you open the door and you reveal this car's interior. The most striking thing you notice right away is those seats that I showed you before. These incredibly tight, sporty, race car looking bucket seats. These are tremendously impressive. They're directly from the McLaren Senna, the exact same seats used in that car. And like I said, these seats save about 40 pounds compared to the regular McLaren 720S. So having these seats is a lightweight reduction that helps your performance and your acceleration. Now, I can't overstate just how crazy these seats are. Incredibly tight hugging. They are the closest things I have ever seen to race car seats in a road car. You can clearly tell that just from looking at them. And when you're sitting in them, you really feel like you're being kept in place just like a race car seat so you don't move around at all. Further proving their race car status is just how many holes they have in them, not just behind you for a racing harness, but also underneath in the middle for the harness to come up through the center of the seat. These really are racing seats and they are impressive to see. Now, the next thing you notice when you first open the door is in the door sill. On the driver's side, you have a little plaque reminding you that you have a 765 LT and it specifically mentions that yours is limited and it shows your production number in the 765 LT production run. Now, this one is 000 because this is a pre-production car. The other cool thing you see in the door jam is this strap. That is the manual door release. Since these doors pop open electronically, if that mechanism were ever to fail, you would need a backup so you could get out of your car. Well, that's this strap. You pop it open and pull on it, and then the door releases manually and mechanically rather than electronically. Frankly, I just think this strap looks cool. But if you're ever trapped in a McLaren, now you know how to get out. But anyway, now that we're inside the 765LT, I want I want to talk about the three coolest things about this interior, all of which are pretty special. For one, let's just talk coloring. This is a really impressive look. You have black Alcantara everywhere with red accents, but it's not just red stitching. You have like red sides to every single piece on the seats, on the dashboard, around the infotainment screen, on the door panel, everywhere in this interior, you have these red accents to complement the black, and it just looks tremendously cool in here. Very daring, very supercar, exactly what you'd want from a special car like this. Next up, the second really cool thing in this interior is the engine, which is basically in this interior. Now, this is one of those cars where you can't actually open up the engine cover to get into the engine. McLaren leaves it bolted down. You have to have a tool to open it up to leave that for trained professionals, but you can see it. And not just through a window on the outside of the car, but through a window on the inside of the car. Look behind you when you're sitting here and you can see the engine sharing the passenger compartment with you through this window. That is a pretty cool effect and it's neat to see it there. Of course, you can also look through the exterior windows and through this window to see the engine from the outside of the car, but a lot of supercars do that. The cool thing here is you can really see it from the inside of the car and that is impressive. It's like you're sharing the interior with your powertrain. You're one with the engine. <laughs> as McLaren probably says in some marketing brochure. But to me, by far the coolest thing about this interior is the gauge cluster. You can see right now it just looks like this, but turn on the car and it electronically folds up. And then when it's in its up position, it displays a screen showing all of the stuff you'd expect from a gauge cluster. That is pretty cool, but it's not done with its tricks yet. Check this out. You switch the car into T mode using these dials for track, and then the 
that gauge cluster also switches, electronically folds down again, and now the top of it shows in a tiny screen only the basics. They figure you're on the racetrack, you don't want to be distracted with all sorts of other displays, you only want to see what you need, so it shows that there. Use these dials to go back into comfort or sport mode, C or S, and then you can see the gauge cluster swivels back into its original position, giving you all the information you might want when you're driving on the street rather than the abbreviated information for track use. That is amazingly cool. And just in case you don't want to switch into track mode, but you still want to show your passenger the gauge cluster party trick, just press this little button to the left of the steering wheel and the gauge cluster swivels again. It goes back down and shows you in that little display the necessary information, or press the button a second time and the gauge cluster swivels back up and then it shows the full screen so you can do it on command. Or just leave it set to only swivel when you switch the car into track mode. Either way, it is a pretty cool party trick. Ferrari and Lamborghini don't have a swiveling dual screen gauge cluster, but McLaren does. And next up, our next interesting item in this interior is the gear selector, which is quite unusual. Not just a lever where you can stick it in gear. Instead, you have these individual switches, D, N, and R, for drive, neutral, and reverse. And you can go between the gears by pushing those buttons for gear selection. That is kind of strange. Next up, above that, you have the engine start stop button. And you can see right now, it's just dark and unassuming. You press it and it pulses a few times and then the car turns on and it turns red. I guess to really emphasize that it is the engine start stop button and the car is on. When you turn the car off it stays red for a few minutes but then eventually it turns dark again which is kind of interesting. That's the engine start stop button a 765 LT. And next up another interesting quirk in this vicinity is this piece that the engine start stop button and the gear selector is mounted on. It's like this bridge that comes down from the infotainment system to the center console. Usually this is just a simple piece integrated into the dashboard, but here you can see there's space behind it where I can put my hand. So it kind of feels like the buttons and switches on this bridge are like floating in place. It's a cool effect and far more exciting than your traditional center control area. And next up on the subject of the center area, it's worth noting that this car has pretty much no storage at all. There is no glove box in this car. There's a space where the glove box would be, but it doesn't open, doesn't carry anything. It's not a glove box. You have no door panel storage in this car because the doors open up. So if you had a panel, stuff would just fly out when you open the doors. In the center console, you do have a little storage area, but there's no lid on it. So anything you have in there is gonna go flying when you accelerate or brake or go around corners fast like you would in a car like this. There's basically no interior storage anywhere, but you do have cup holders, two of them in fact, one right next to the seats and one sort of behind that bridge thing I showed you earlier, two cup holders, zero storage. You can see what McLaren has decided to prioritize. I will say in all fairness, there is a little storage in here. Behind the seats, between them, you have a net. So you can put like paperwork or small items, but that is basically it. Although behind the seats where the engine is, is a big shelf. And frankly, you could put stuff up there if you wanted. There are no cargo tie downs. I don't think this is a necessarily advisable thing that McLaren would suggest doing. And it certainly would hamper your visibility, but it is an empty space and a flat surface where you could throw stuff in a pinch if you were trying to transport a lot of goods or luggage in your 765 LT. And next up, I wanna talk door openers. To get out of this car, you have this little door opener mounted on the door panel, which has kind of a cool look to it. It's like a hoop. You pull on it and it electronically releases the door and then from there you just push and the door opens up. Pretty simple. The hard part comes when you want to close the door again because the door is heavy. Now the door pull is easily within the reach of a normal person sitting in the car, but pulling it closed takes some real effort in order to make sure that not only does it close, but it also latches. This is definitely one of the heaviest and hardest to close doors I've seen. Could cause problems with some weaker people, like for instance, if a child attempts to go out and do some hot laps in a 765 LT, they may have trouble closing the door. 
And next up, another interesting item with this car. When you go to turn it off, you can see the gauge cluster tells you how many days are remaining on the battery, which might seem kind of odd until you think about it. People who have these cars have big collections with a lot of supercars, so they probably park them for long periods of time. By telling you how many days you have left before the battery dies, it lets you know precisely how long you can leave it sitting before you should hook it up to a trickle charger or drive it. That's actually a pretty useful feature for the type of people who own cars like this, even though it may seem crazy to people who daily drive a Toyota Camry and <laughs> they don't care how many days their battery has left because they use the car every day. And next up, we move on to the infotainment system. Now, I recently reviewed the McLaren 675 LT, the LT that came before this LT, and I talked about how the infotainment system just really not all that good. Well, I'm happy to report in this car, a few years newer, the infotainment system is quite a bit better. For one thing, I still like the fact that it is vertical. I like infotainment systems that are aligned this way because it's what we're used to from using a smartphone. It's also simply more responsive than the system in the old McLaren models. Way easier to use, responds more quickly to your touch, like you would hope. Still not perfect, not as good as some of the very best volume car makers, but it's really good for a supercar, one of the best supercar infotainment systems in the car industry. With that said, there are some interesting quirks of the infotainment system worth pointing out. For one thing, the backup camera. The infotainment screen is vertical, but the backup camera is horizontal. So when it displays, it's very small, which is really not ideal. You can see it's a high quality camera. You want to see it larger. Fortunately, McLaren has thought of that. Check this out. Put the car into reverse. The backup camera actually displays on the gauge cluster screen, and it's huge. Absolutely massive and perfectly sized to fit the gauge cluster screen. That is one of the largest backup camera displays in the car industry. That's pretty cool. Next up, a few other interesting infotainment system quirks. For one thing, the garage door opener is in the infotainment system. In a lot of cars, it's like programmed into the rear view mirror. In this thing, you want to pull up to your garage door and open it. You've programmed it into your screen, you go to garage door opener, press which door you want to open, and it opens up. That is unusual. Never before seen the garage door opener in the infotainment system. And next up, another interesting item in the infotainment system is a feature called variable drift control. You can use this to basically dial down the traction control settings in order to drift your 765 LT, which is pretty cool and shows that McLaren has a sense of humor and fun and excitement beyond just purpose-built track cars like some other brands. And next up, another interesting quirk in the infotainment system. If you go into settings, you can choose what type of tires this car is using. And not just like the size, it actually gives a choice between different models, P0, Corsa, Trofeo. You can choose specifically which tire it's using, and I guess maybe that will change the behavior of the car a little bit. Never really seen that before, kind of an interesting thing. You also have the option on there to choose a winter tire, just in case you've decided to use your 765 LT in the winter and you've equipped it with snow tires. And next up, another nice infotainment quirk is the track telemetry system, which allows you to measure your lap times, compare them against one another, record them on video. It's all very cool. Some interesting items in here. One of them is that you can select the weather for your particular track day. And I still love the fact that you can choose between overcast and cloudy. Those are two separate types of weather <laughs> because this is a British car and British people can distinguish, even though it doesn't affect the way you're driving on the track at all, what type of clouds are above you. Now, last time I made fun of this, I get emails from dozens of British people saying, oh, Doug, no, no, overcast, very different from cloudy. You see, clouds is as cloudy as clouds and overcast is also clouds, but they're in a different place. And <laughs> no. Overcast and cloudy are the same, at least for the purposes of measuring your lap time on a racetrack. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's overcast or cloudy, it isn't wet, so your lap time shouldn't really change all that much. Oh, I, my car runs slower on overcast days than on cloudy days. <laughs> sure it does. The other funny thing here is you have the ability to set the track day weather to snow. <laughs> Just in case you arrive at the track and it's snowy and you decide, hey, let's run anyway. Apparently on those winter tires that you told the car it was equipped with on that tire screen earlier. With that said, although I joke about the track telemetry thing, I really do like it. It's a great feature that really allows you to get in touch with your track times and see how you're doing and where you can improve. You have a camera at the very front of the car that 
can show you how you're driving on the track and you also have a camera mounted inside the car behind the seats and that will show you like your hand position where you're driving how exactly corresponding to the track itself so it's cool to see that it's cool to have the cameras you can watch it back later and say oh i could have done better in that spot could have had better hand position there and it's neat to have that feature in this car since it's so clearly designed for the racetrack and finally our last interesting infotainment system item it's easier to adjust some aspects of the climate control in this McLaren than in older McLaren models. Specifically, it's easier to change the temperature because the temperature display is always on the screen regardless of which screen you're on. So whether you're looking at the map, the settings, whatever, you can always change your temperature very easily. That wasn't true in previous infotainment systems. With that said, in order to change where the air is coming out, you still have to press this little fan button to go into the climate controls. And you can see, as always in McLarens, you have a picture of a race car driver and that lets you adjust exactly where you want the air to blow. On the subject of the climate controls, by the way, one cool feature I wish I saw in way more cars, when you go into the climate control menu, you can see there's a button marked quick cool. You press that and it instantly blows cold air on you as much as possible. That's a neat feature. Rather than you having to adjust the air amount and the temperature, just press that one button and it knows what you want and it does it for you. It has the same thing with quick heat. You get in the car, you're cold. Rather than having to go into the temperature control, the fan speed, just press quick heat and the car automatically sends you as much heat as possible. It's a neat idea. It really should be in more cars. And finally, our last interior item in the 765LT, moving back to the gauge cluster, you can see the gauge cluster screen, fairly comprehensive, fairly high resolution, nice to look at, but it's not really all that configurable. You have this little stock coming off the steering column to the left, and you can scroll through a few different menus, but there's not that much to see in here. Most of it is in the infotainment system, and of course the gauge Cluster's real party trick is the fact that it electronically swivels. And next up, we move on to the front of the 765 LT, and specifically the front trunk. Now, to open it, I press the little front trunk button on the key fob, it pops open and then I open it the rest of the way. When you open the front trunk, you discover it is quite large. This is an impressively sized front trunk for an ultra track focused supercar. Of course, it's just the regular trunk from the 720S, but it's still impressive to see how much cargo you could carry with you before resorting to that rear shelf behind the seats. Now on the inside of this trunk, it's basically just a trunk. There's nothing unusual in here except for this box, which contains the owner's manual. And on the box, it specifically says, remove manual from box and present to customer. Box must be destroyed and not given to the customer with emphasis. The customer can have the manual, but not the box. No one gets our McLaren box. It is a special box. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like I said, nothing else here notable. It's really just a front trunk, but there's still more to talk about in the front of the 765LT, specifically the lighting. You can see when you look at the front of this car, you have big holes where you would expect the lights to be. You have a little light bar that goes across, but that's not the headlights. That's the running lights or the turn signals when the turn signals are on and you can see them flashing. Instead, the lights themselves are sort of inset within these holes pretty deep in there, you can't really see them at a quick glance. Now, this was the subject of a lot of controversy when the McLaren 720S first came out. A lot of people said it just didn't look good. It looked weird having these like holes there instead of lights. Why did they do that? But I have to say in time, this look has grown on me. It looks very distinctive. And now, frankly, I've gotten used to it. I don't find it ugly anymore. And I think it helps set apart the 720S and now the 765LT from other supercars that don't have a weird light hole in front. No, but really, I do think it looks pretty cool now. And so those are the quirks and features of the McLaren 765LT. Now, like I mentioned, I can't yet drive this car. This is a pre-production model and the real thing isn't yet available for driving, but hopefully sometime in the next few months, I'll be able to get the 765LT out on the road and see how it drives. For now, there's your most thorough tour yet of the quirks and features of the latest McLaren supercar.